And welcome back everyone. We have been making insane progress on the S13. We finished the tubs, the lower radiator support, the quick release core support, test fitted everything in the front end, and we also finished the RB. And the other night I went ahead and just reassembled the rear subframe. So there's not much left on our to-do list. So today what we're going to do, we're going to start with rack relocation. And I'm not just going to do it, I want to show you guys the before and after and why that's important to do on a drift car with angle. First thing I'm going to do is install the front suspension with the rack and pinion on the subframe. And you already know, we got to set this thing back to the lowest point. <laughs> So the knuckles on my car are stock knuckles that have been modded. So this right here is the tie rod mount. This is going to be what steers the wheels when you turn the steering wheel. And in here, lower ball joint. So there's a couple different knuckle styles. This particular knuckle is a drop knuckle. What a drop knuckle is, is basically adds a gap here in between the center point of the hub and the lower ball joint. This will help correct the steering geometry because when you slam a car, you'll be driving on the streets, your lower control arms will be like this, like at that angle. But they're supposed to be more flat, you know, more parallel to the ground. By adding a gap in between the midpoint of the hub and the lower ball joint, that will help level this control arm. As you can see, it looks pretty level. Now, why is that important? Well, we'll get there. As for the tie rod mount, you can see how close this is to the ball joint. The stock knuckle, with it being not modded, has the tie rod mount probably all the way right about here. So from here to here is the distance between the tie rod mount and the ball joint. Decreasing the distance between the lower ball joint and the tie rod mount adds angle. So this is what you would call a drop knuckle with a modded tie rod mount. It's good for angle and steering geometry. Running a modded knuckle on S13, there is an additional step that you need to take, and that is the rack relocation, which we will get to, but I still want to show the process of why that's important. So now that we've explained the knuckle, we're going to go ahead and put on the rack and pinion. And this is just some useless knowledge for you. Right hand drive and left hand drive subframes are the same. S13 and S14 subframes are the same. The only difference is the rack diameter between S13 and S14. The S14 has a smaller diameter rack. The more you know. <laughs> the rack is mounted, all the suspension is fully tightened down. So some things to pay attention to right away are how far away the tie rod is from the control arm and how far the rack is from the subframe. You can kind of see that there is a slight angle. So we're gonna use this as our level. This control arm is straight for us. As you can see, the inner tie rod is angled ever so slightly. So what relocating the rack does is moves the entire rack about an inch or so forward. Basically what you do is cut the subframe in a way that you can slide everything forward. Why is that important, you ask? When you're drifting, that will create steering bind. If you're at full lock or even mid drift, sometimes the steering wheel will feel like it's stuck. And that could be your suspension components binding because they are not at a cooperative angle. So I figured it'd be a good idea to just take some measurements of the before and after. Then we can really compare the difference. I don't have my micrometer here, otherwise I would have used that. I do prefer the metric system. And this is at full lock. I drew a line where I measured before on the control arm, so I'm gonna pick that same spot, and then we'll measure perpendicular with the inner tie rod. Okay, so now that we've taken measurements and I've showed you how it looks, I'm going to take off the rack and pinion, as well as the subframe. Just to make it easier to follow my explanation, I'm gonna draw an arrow pointing to the front. Our goal is to move the rack mounts forward on the subframe. So the first thing that we're gonna do is outline our cut line. I usually like to use a straight edge to get this nice and straight across. I have drawn the very first cut line that we're going to make. So imagine this piece that I outlined will be able to be removed from the subframe entirely. Once we have it removed, we can draw our second cut line. But note that the edges of the cut lines are straight. So this is gonna be straight from here all the way down and around to the bottom as well. And there's the bottom cut line. So now what we want to do is move it forward. This is where it was originally. You can see all the lines line up. But if we lift it up top of this layer here, 
but I'm not gonna overlap it like this. I'm going to butt it together. I'm not trying to raise the rack. I'm just trying to move the rack forward. So now we see our next cut line. So we need to trim all of this back. And that is also why I mentioned that it's very important that you cut this very straight on the sides because now we don't have to fill in any gaps or create any angles. So now we've just trimmed these pieces off of the subframe and this was on the bottom part. And now this is how it looks. I even went ahead and prepped all the metal to be welded just by grinding off all the paint and even grinded off some of the junk on the inside as far as I could reach. So now we're going to test fit it to confirm that it fits. Just kind of slides in there. And just to make this easier, I have this little vice grip. And there's a center point on this side where I put the notch in and then clamp it down. And you can see the bottom too, just like that. So before we go ahead and weld this into position, there's something very important that you need to make sure you do. The way that you mount the rack and pinion on these cars is through these holes here, here, and then there's also in there and in there. And with this being pushed forward, there's not going to be enough room to fit a bolt through there. Okay, I just clearance the bottom for the bolts. Now, before I weld this, I like to measure it out just to verify that each side of the rack mounts are pushed up in an equal length. Because you don't want to weld this on here sideways, you know? Your rack's gonna be all wonky. And the car will drive worse. <laughs> I pick a point that's gonna be the same on each side. So, I pick right between this spot weld and the weld seam right here. So, right there. And I'll measure that distance. About 40 millimeters. Oh, that's good, that's good. About 40 millimeters. Okay, I'm gonna weld this all together now. Beautiful. I even went ahead and laid a few more beads on the RB25 mounts. So yeah, we are good to go back on the car. I did put a light layer of black paint on top of this just for now. I'll probably get this powder coated over winter. Just by looking at this with the knuckle straight, you can tell that the inner tie rod is way closer to parallel with the lower control arm now. So let's take our first measurement. And we went from that blue line on the control arm there, so let's check that out. We need to find out the last measurement here, which was full lock modded. Well, that's pretty good. Inch and a half. You could probably do some math and geometry to figure out the length of each side of the triangle here. And then from there, you can figure out each angle, but we're not gonna go that deep. <laughs> What's noticeable here is the outer measurements, half an inch forward now at this outermost point. This is a lot closer to being parallel, even at lock, which overall is going to help your driving experience. So yeah, definitely recommend doing this. Turned out very nicely. And they do make kits that will offset the inner tie rod mount. They're just little spacers that are like rack offset bushings. But if you run those, that will prematurely make the rack fail because it's not designed to take the load at a 90 degree angle. This is the correct way to do it. Let me know what you think about this method or if you guys have any different methods that you guys use for your own cars or experiences that you've had with relocating your rack or even just improving your steering geometry in general. Hopefully this will inspire you guys to check out your suspension and see what you can do to make it better. We have just arrived at Chicago JDM. Although we don't have the work truck, hopefully Franz 240 will be able to fit our brand new package. Yo, what's up James? What's up? James is actually the guy that I bought my RV off of. How many, two years ago now? Yeah, Yeah, about <laughs> two years. Two Maybe years? three now, I, I don't know, time's flying. Oh man, another right hand drive conversion? Yep. Nice signature. I had to. Original clusters, got the, cutting myself. On a block off plate. Yeah. Oh man, sunroof button. This thing is sweet. I like those block off plates alone are worth a lot. 
<laughs> oh, I've never seen these with like chrome trim on the vents. No, they, That's pretty creative. You know how Japan is? They're, they do things a little Yeah, for real. Weird. <laughs> Maybe we'll right hand drive swap the sedan work truck someday. Who knows? <laughs> how nice would it be to just pick up another SR? It's crazy what these things are selling for these days. It's got a five speed on it too. Or you can get one of these and just ball out. I always love coming to these shops. It's so fun looking at all the JDM motors and parts. And here's what we came here for. The cage from Cage Kids. You think this is gonna fit in the car? <laughs> You might have to like disassemble it and put one in at a time. Yes. <sighs> I think that's all of it. All right, maybe let's start with the biggest bars. <laughs> Which would be... Probably this one. Ooh. Or is this a hoop? Maybe with we'll this one. That's one of the front down bars that goes attaches to. Yeah, that's that's the main Johnny right there. <laughs> oh god. It's supposed to have been fun to make. Right? It's gonna be real fun putting it in, that's for sure. <laughs> Hopefully. Here, I'll let you do the honor. <laughs> Thank you. Just scratch up the car. I don't wanna be the one who just can break something. <laughs> okay. I think I think we'll be alright. That was the biggest bar to fit. It fit tuck the interior. All right. Wow. It all fit in there and the privacy cover fits. How about that? <laughs> Certified work truck. Well, I couldn't resist and had to pick up an extra goodie. So we got this S13 SR Apexi MAF adapter filter thing. Pretty cool. Got an ancient filter on it still. <laughs> Might have to replace that, but hey. Put you right back there. I'm so happy this fit in the car with no problems. <laughs> Try and put this in a nice spot so that no debris or metal flakes or anything gets on these nice clean bars. So I'll just put them on this nice blanket for now and then wrap it up until I'm ready to put the cage on which is hopefully soon. We'll see though. I did want to put the quarter panel on first, so you never know. Huge shout out to Cage Kits and Chair Slayer. They really hooked it up with this one. I really can't wait to install this. It's getting cold out here. Gotta stay warm. Tuck in my cage. I really want to clean up this intake filter adapter and put it on Fran's car. Yep, that's not cool. Well, that cleaned up pretty nicely. Not bad for 20 bucks and five minutes of work. Hopefully this will fit on here. I've been looking for the stock rubber intake for Friends SR, and I can't find one anywhere. So if anyone has one, let me know. I'll gladly trade you this ISR one. So that'll do for now. <laughs>